There's something that's come up in this country that didn't used to exist, which is envy. And it's, it's a big issue. And it, it was understood back in the day. And, and we, we are empowering. We, we're now dealing with the first wave of participation trophy. Uh, I, my, my own fecal matter doesn't stink empowered i feel so good about myself um everybody's a winner there's no losers we are dealing with the first wave of those assholes. that's who we're dealing with now because this has been going on for about 25 years and we're just starting to get maybe 20 years mm -hmm. and those kids were eight or nine years old so what what we have I haven't really broken this down but i'm going to try now we created a bunch of self-entitled monsters mm -hmm. and this has become the pursuit of my life where people are so far out of it and what they expect and what they think realistic is and what the the set of rules that pertains to them versus the other guys because that's what the bottom line is i want my most valuable player trophy we well, are the slowest fattest guy on the team why should he get one and i don't get one because he busts his and he runs a 4 4 40. That's why he gets one. Well, this is and then everyone gets involved and then everyone gives everyone a participation trophy and then everyone feels good about themselves. But it's not based on anything. You should feel good about yourself because of your accomplishments, not because somebody yelled at you to feel good about yourself and you a fake piece of plastic that was sprayed gold and had your name on a plaque on the bottom of it. And when these folks become adults and enter the workforce, and we, they've done stories about this, how you can't treat them, you know, the boss can't yell, hey, Let's go. Let's get back to work now. And oh, oh, you raised your voice to me. You better watch your tone, buddy. My dad's a lawyer. I'll sue you. I'll take this company. Self-entitled <laughs> who think the world owes them a living. And now we're getting the first wave of these. <laughs> and now they grew up. And it's fine if you grow up in this little snow globe of a life where everything is awesome and everyone gets a participation trophy and there's snowing. no losers well when you get shaken up and everything's awesome but then you get out into the real world and you realize i'm a loser you're not doing that well you're not making that much money there's no more participation trophies this is the la auto show you don't get to sit around and go hey here's my piece of i worked on everyone why aren't you guys buying it and then instead of finding a mirror and finding the reason why no one's buying your car you just want to run around and yell at everyone else who's selling cars and now you want to take and throw it at the cars because you want to their cars up because that's what's going on it's like, instead of looking in the mirror and go, why the am I not doing better? You just find some guys got more than you and go, hey man, what do you need all that for? It's the same version of, hey man, what do you need an MVP trophy for? Because I bust my ass. That's why. Or maybe I'm just genetically better than you. Either way, buddy. Our money. <laughs> What is that, Gettys? A discontented, lazy rabble instead of a thrifty working class. And all because a few starry-eyed dreamers like Peter Bailey stir them up and fill their head with a lot of impossible ideas. Now, I say... Just a minute, just, just a minute. Now, hold on, Mr. Parker. Just a minute. Now, you're right when you say my father was no businessman. I know that. Why he ever started this cheap penny ante building alone, I'll never know. But... Neither you nor anybody else can say anything against his character because his whole life was... Why, in the 25 years since he and Uncle Billy started this thing, he never once thought of himself. Isn't that right, Uncle Billy? He didn't save enough money to send Harry to school, let alone me. But he did help a few people get out of your slums, Mr. Potter. And what's wrong with that? Right. Here, you're all businessmen here. Don't it make them better citizens? Doesn't it make them better customers? You, you said that they... What did you say just a minute ago? They, they had to wait and save their money before they even thought of a decent home? Wait? Wait for what? Until their children grow up and leave them? Until they're so old and broken down that they... Do you know how long it takes a working man to save $5,000? Just remember this, Mr. Potter, that this rabble you're talking about, they do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. Well, is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? Anyway, my father didn't think so. People were human beings to him, but to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. 
Well, in my book, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book. I'm talking about the building and loan. I know very well what you're talking about. You're talking about something you can't get your fingers on, and it's galling you. That's what you're talking about, I know. Well, I, I, I've said too much. Put any real pressure on these people of yours to pay those mortgages? Time's up bad, Mr. Potter. A lot of these people are out of way. Well, then foreclose. I can't do that. These families have children. Uh -huh. They're not my children. But they're somebody's children, Mr. Potter. Are you running a business or a charity war? Well, all my Not fun. with my money. Mr. Potter, what makes you such a hard-skulled character? You have no family, no children. You can't begin to spend all the money you've got. Oh, I suppose I should give it to miserable failures like you. 